So my sermon today is Fishers of Men. So, and, he, and Jesus said, and he, Jesus, said unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Our Father in heaven, please be with us today. Please be with me and guide my words. Um, be with those that listen. Help them to be the words of you, Lord. Help me to just be the, the lips. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read Matthew 4, 18 to 22. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you to, be, to fish for men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, they saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. One second. Um, I love the, the Bible. It kind of, you know, you hear one story, but then, uh, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John kind of almost tell the same stories, but they tell it over, and then there's a greater detail. So we're going to read the same story in Luke 5, 1 to 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gensarot, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonged to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled the partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled their boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus, then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish your people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. Kind of the same story, but greater detail. He had just, I mean, can you imagine that? Such a load of fish that it's sinking the boats. That's incredible. We went fishing a couple weeks ago, and we caught... Um, 36 salmon, and that's a lot of fish, and it didn't sink anything. So I can't imagine how much that is. Um, we're going to dive into that. Jesus says, follow me. So what does that mean, to follow him? So Jesus doesn't say, come with me and grab you by the wrist and drag you away. He says, follow me. It's your choice. You get to make that decision. You are choosing to go with him. Um, and, and you must decide on your own. And just like the, the fishermen did, you leave what you were doing before. Not, not necessarily your, sometimes your house and what you've been doing, but what you were doing before, the things that, we, you know, the earthly things that you were doing, you leave those behind so that you can follow him. And so they're not binding, binding you to this earth. You're leaving those so you can follow him. And then... Once you start to follow him, you, become, you get the characteristics of Jesus, which are in Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Um, when you, you just get that list, and so I, and I looked it up, because you know, when, when you read Galatians 5.22, it just says, you know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. But when you, when you look into love, what is love? It's our moral character, and we show it by the way we act and treat others. So you can actually see love. You know, it's, it's how people act and how people interact with others. Joy is gladness not based on circumstances. You know, some people are happy. Oh, I'd be happy if I got this. But that's not joy. Joy is you're always happy, no, not even based on the circumstances. It's just inside. It's what you have. It's what you are. Peace. It's a state of tranquility or serenity. It's just peaceful. It's kind of like water, you know, when there's no wind or anything and it's just flat. 
It's peace. Long-suffering. The ability to endure suffering with hope and love. The quality of self-restraint in the face of provocation. And I think everybody's had that before. When the world is just, you know, weighing down on you, but you don't crack. You just, like, kind of get that out and just kind of stay with it. Gentleness. The quality of showing kindness and being calm in dealing with others. Goodness. Selfless desire to be generous to others. And faith. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith. So those are the characteristics of God. Um, I looked it up. I did a lot, not a lot, some research on this. Um, Crosswalk.com went into fishing for men. And what, what does that mean? What do you need to do to fish for men? So they have four things. Find where people are. Kind of like fishing. You're not going to catch fish in your living room. You're not going to be able to you know, speak about Jesus in your living room. You need to go to where the people are. But the good thing, or the easy thing, it's anybody. And it's everybody. You know, almost like here in Alaska. Any body of water, almost, almost any body of water, has fish in it. So you, anybody you talk to, talk about Jesus. Number two, bait the hook, cast the net. Keep casting the line. You know, it's anything you say, just keep talking about Jesus. You know, when I, when I do dentistry, especially when I do something difficult, I'll say, thank God. And I really mean, thank God. You know, if I extract a tooth and it's difficult, I'll say, you know, and I was in the military and it's not politically correct, it's not right, you're not supposed to do that. But that's how you feel, that's how you are. And people will say, oh, I'm a Christian too. They'll respond even though you're not thinking about what you're saying. So just keep casting that line. Keep saying what you say to them and they'll respond. Um, the other part of baiting the hook and casting the net is you're the Jesus that people see before they see Jesus. So they're going to see you and how you are and those characteristics way before they see Jesus. So you're the attractant. You're the lure. You're the thing pulling them closer to God. Um, so you need to have those characteristics to get people to go that direction. Number three, it's that you need to catch them before you try to clean them. And just like, how in the world are you going to clean a fish before you've caught it? Just like if you're trying to attract someone to Jesus, you want to be like, well, you need to stop this, you need to stop that. No, they need to come to Jesus. Once they come to Jesus, they on themselves will change their behaviors or things that you think they need to change. But at the same time, it's not about you. It's about their relationship with God. You don't need to worry about that. All you need to worry about is getting them to know Jesus. Um, all have sinned and fall short. And that's the thing. We kind of don't look at that. We don't think about, well, what about me? You know, all of us we're, are sinners. We're sinners. Well, it's not really we're, are. And so no one is a greater sinner than another. We're all sinners. And so we can't say, well, they need to clean up. We all need to clean up. And the fourth one is focus on casting a net, not on how many fish you've caught. And we, we do that. I know when I go fishing, I talk about getting skunked, which does everybody know what that means? When you go fishing, you catch zero fish. And we read that, you know, uh, Peter's like, but Lord, we've been fishing all night and we've caught nothing. But he's like, throw it out again. Do it again. And, and it doesn't matter. Just keep going. Um, it's always, when I fish, I'm always like, okay, I'm going to stop at this time. But everybody knows the fisherman. You, you lie then. And it was funny because the other day I was like, 10 more casts. So I was like, oh, I'm going to fish until 8. Then I was like, 10 more casts. And on cast number 11, 10 more casts, on cast number 11, I caught a fish. But you actually have to stop at some point in time when you fish fish, because otherwise you get yelled at. Um, but don't stop. Keep going. You know, keep, keep witnessing. Keep telling people about God. Um, and don't worry about the results. Everybody's heard those stories of, of, of ministers going and preaching and having their congregation and no one ever coming. 
but then that guy will pass away, and then there's an explosion in the population. And he had laid the seed, he had he'd planted that, and he didn't get to reap any of those benefits, but he's planted the seeds. So, the, Jesus recruits the, ser- the disciples, they go and they work for three years, Jesus dies, and then he comes back. Um, Jesus had come back three times, and I'm going to read John 21. So it's just kind of setting you up for where we're going now. So John 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were there. I'm going out fishing, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back in the boat, dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So, three main points. Peter said, I'm going out to fish. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in a boat. But that night, they caught nothing. So, why'd they go fishing? So they were supposed to be fishers of men, but they had reverted back. They are like, nope, we're going to go back and be fishers of fish. And so they weren't, they were no longer doing really what they were supposed to be doing. They had reverted. Then Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. So again, why did they catch fish? Because they followed Jesus' word. They listened to him and actually obeyed what he would said. Um, I, you know, hindsight 2020. When you look at this, you're like, when you already be thinking, this is Jesus, he already did this. He told us to cast on the other side. But they didn't recognize it until they caught the fish. But why did they catch fish? Because they listened to him. They, they threw it on, on the right side. They threw it on the right side and they caught fish. And it was full of fish. And I don't know how many times I've read this, but I never caught that it said 153 fish. 153 large fish. Um, but even so, the, the net was not torn. They go into a lot of reasons for that. Um, I, some of them, some of the explanations on why there's 153 fish were so out there. But we're going to go over three of them, four of them. Um, at that time, they thought there was 153 different species of fish. So really, it's signifying that they have caught every species, meaning that the word of God is going to go out to all people. I like that one. Another one, they, these get a little bit crazy, that there was 153,000 people who constructed the temple of God, and so they're going to build a new temple, and so that's why there's 153 fish. I don't know where they came up with the math to multiply to 153,000. This is my, my favorite crazy one. There's ten commandments, and they, seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, Someone else said there's seven days in the week. 
So there's 10 and there's 7. If you add to those two together, that's 17. And then if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way to 17, you come up with 153. I was like, okay. And it worked because I was like, really? So I took a calculator yesterday and I added up and it did 153. But I was like, I don't understand. I mean, that's kind of a crazy thought. But it was, it was, it's an idea, and I, it was amazing that someone had thought of that. Um, but I think maybe there's 153 fish in the net. I mean, that, that all by itself is a miracle. To cast one net in and pull out 153 fish, that is amazing. So, then we're going to keep reading through John 21. John 21, 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Wait, wait, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Remember that, that Jesus said, um, he told Peter that he was going to forsake him, and he's like, no. And he's like, yes, three times before the, before the rooster crows. He's like, no, never. And then he did. All right, now we're going to continue. He said, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Verily, truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This is the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is he going to pray? Who, who is going to pray you? When Jesus saw him, he asked, "Lord, what about him?" So the point that's important. So when he met them, they went fishing. They caught so many fish it almost sunk, sunk the boats. Jesus died. They see him on the shore. He says, "Cast the net on the other side." They catch 153 large fish. They pull it ashore. What does Jesus say to them again? Follow me. And then it ends with... One second. It ends with him saying, follow me. He says, then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciples whom Jesus loved was following them. And if this was a movie, they would be walking off into the sunset. But in this case, they'd be walking off into the sunrise. And then at, at the end, right before the credits roll, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. And it's amazing. So just like casting on the other side, they listened to God. They did what was supposed to be done, and great things happened. At the end, they followed Jesus. Great things were done. That is my sermon. And thank you.